Well, so nice to see all of you this morning for the children's message. Thanks for coming up. Well, in my, in my, church, in my sermon today, I'll be telling you the kind of church that God wants. What kind of church do you think God wants? God, God wants a church that's for all people, and that seems kind of obvious, doesn't it? But in our sermon, you're going to hear it wasn't always so obvious to everybody. Well, when you come to church, I, I want to be, remind you that we want to thank God for all of our blessings. And one of the things we thank God for is being a citizen. Can you say that word with me? Citizen. One more time, let's ask for their help. Citizen. When you're a citizen, it means you belong to that place or that country. And, and the way that you know that you're a citizen is it helps to have this marker right here. Do you ever see this? Do you know what this is? It's a flag, isn't it? Do you know what kind of flag? An American flag, yeah. Do you ever see anybody wave these things, right? Whoever waves this, they're proud that they live here, right? And I bet you've seen the American flag in a lot of places here in New Ulm, haven't you? You've seen it probably in front of a school, in front of a, a, fire, uh, a fire station. Did you ever see it in church? Look over there. That American flag is there every week, and we want to thank God that we get to live in such a great country with so many freedoms, the freedom to come together. And, and this American uh, flag tells us that we're citizens of this country, that we belong here. But did you know that other people have flags who live around the world? It's not just us. There's German flags and Norwegian flags and Mexican flags, and they're reminded that people in other nations around the earth, and someday you may get to visit some of these places. But take a look on the other side of the church. Did you ever see that flag? Do you know what that flag is? Look at right over there. It's a white with a, a blue and a, a red cross on it. Does that give you a clue what kind of a flag that is? That's a Christian flag, yeah. It, it's a reminder that not only are we citizens here of this country, more importantly, we're citizens of heaven. And the reason that we get to be citizens of heaven is because Jesus Christ died on the cross to, and rose again, and we believe that, don't we? And one day, we're going to see that country with our own eyes, and we're going to live there forever with God. But as long as we live here, we want others to join us here in our country and around the world to learn about Jesus too. Let's pray and ask God to help us do that. Dear Jesus, help us remember that the Christian church is for all nations, not just Americans. Help us do everything we can to welcome others to know that, that you are their Savior. Bless us and keep us close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The final section of Scripture we direct your attention today is recorded for us it's recorded on the screen, Isaiah chapter 56. And today we're going to celebrate our new Christian citizenship by leaving the old country behind and by displaying our Christian patriotism to God. Hear the word of God as it's, as it's recorded for us in Isaiah 56. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. All who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. This is God's word, we pray. Lord Jesus, sanctify us by your truth. Your inspired word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. In the saving name of the triune God, my dear Christian friends, you can meet some interesting people on Uber rides in the big city. Ever take an Uber ride before? My wife Christine and I took an Uber ride some years ago in Nevada when we were visiting our daughter. And the Uber rider, or Uber driver, introduced himself as Vladimir from the country of Cuba. He told us 
that he very much wanted to be an American citizen. He, he talked about it like it was the greatest thing in the world. You probably know it's quite a process to become an American citizen, didn't you? Why, also included is not only a bunch of paperwork, but also to be able to take and pass a citizenship, a written citizenship test. Can you imagine if your citizenship depended on how many details you know about America? Have you ever seen the test questions before? I happen to have them in front of me. And I'd like you to take that test right now. I just have two of them. And by the way, there will be an evaluation afterwards. Let's see how well you do. Ready? Question number one. When was the Constitution of the United States written? Start out with an easy one. So what year? The correct answer? 1787. Raise your hand if you got that question right. The INS is going to be busy deporting people today. Okay, I'll admit that wasn't so easy. Let, let's go on to a, another question, a standard question on the test. How many voting members are in the House of Representatives? No fair, you were here last night, you know this. How many? The correct answer? 435. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Okay, a couple more, but not everybody. Okay, let's just admit it. It's been a while since we were in a high school history class, some of us more than others. But how much do you want to bet that a naturalized citizen who passed this test knows more about America than we do? My point? My point is that it's easy to undervalue our American citizenship and take it for granted. The rest of the world longs for the freedoms and the privileges that you and I get to enjoy every day. But remember why we have them. Yes, thank God for the brave men and women who, who fought and died to protect our country. But thank God and realize that it's only by God's grace that you and I do live in this country called in America. While nearly all of us here today are American citizens, thank God for that, but did you know if you're an American citizen, if you're a believer in Jesus, you enjoy dual citizenship? Not only are we citizens here on earth, but simultaneously, we're citizens of heaven, all because of our baptism. Well, we don't always appreciate our heavenly citizenship either. And that's why I invite you to pull up a pew and let's take a closer look to the word of the words of Isaiah chapter 56. And I pray by the end, the Holy Spirit will lead you to celebrate our new Christian citizenship. We do that as we leave the old country behind. And secondly, as we also display our patriotism to God. Have you ever traveled overseas? Raise your hand if you have. Okay, quite a few of you. Back in high school, when I was going to Michigan Lutheran Seminary, I had the opportunity to be a German exchange student. I lived in Germany with other students for five weeks. We toured a lot of castles, a lot of castles, and we learned a lot about the German culture. But I, as a tourist, I always knew that I was going to return back to, an Amer uh, back to America. But when you immigrate to a country, the complete opposite is true. Whoever wants to be a citizen usually burns his or her bridges behind from the old country. But in a very real way, when God made you and me citizens of heaven by baptism, by believing in Christ, literally, he separated us from this country. But leaving that old country, it's not an easy thing. I mean, remember our sinful nature wants to hold on much too tight to the things and the people here in this world. But God's word reminds us, you and I don't belong here. We belong to heaven. And yet we live here, and God calls us to be 
different people. As citizens who live here in America, you and I are not better than anyone else, but we are forgiven. And God calls us to live forgiven lives. So in reality, you and I really are living here as foreigners living in a strange world. It's not easy to be a foreigner here in our country. I mean, if you ever want to know what that feels like, go into a store where people don't speak any English. Try to navigate that store. Try to find something you wouldn't normally look for. It's going to be hard, and you sure don't want to ask anybody else for fear of looking ignorant. May all of us do more than we can to welcome other people who are from other cultures. In a similar way, our sinful nature puts enormous pressure for us to conform, to go along with this world. So why is that so hard to do? Well, maybe it's because we've been a Christian for so long, we've forgotten what it means to not live in a Christian world. Maybe we underestimate Satan. Maybe we forget to thank God for rescuing us from the old country. You know what old country I'm referring to, right? For all of us, when we're born into this world, we're not born just born Americans. We're born in sin. We're born belonging to the devil. And God wants us to leave that old country behind. The Old Testament Jews, quite honestly, they forgot that. They figured as God's chosen people, they were set for life. And they got lazy. They totally forgot the privilege that they had. In fact, a lot of them thought that they were better than everyone else. The truth is the Jews were just as corrupt as everyone else, and they didn't realize it until it was too late. You see, it wasn't race, but grace is what made them people of God. It was not race, but God's grace that rescued them from slavery in Egypt. It wasn't race, but grace that led them to the promised land. And it's not race, it's grace that makes us citizens of heaven too. But there's another way for people to immigrate here to the United States. It works sort of like a visa lottery. Each year, so many visas are allotted to people in different countries who come to this country wanting to be a citizen. And if you win the visa lottery, you go right to the front of the line as an immigrant, no matter where, what, where you are in the process. But in a very real way, we've won God's lottery, haven't we? The lottery of heaven. But it came at a cost. Jesus Christ is the only one who's ever earned this, his place in God's kingdom perfectly. But by faith, Jesus shares his perfect record with each one of us. His perfect record becomes ours. And that's what God wanted his people to know, to look forward to that Messiah, the one who would come, who would make right everything that was wrong. And he was coming very soon. Well, Isaiah lived 700 years before Jesus was born, but Isaiah's running like it's just about to happen. Listen to what he says. For my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Well, St. Paul's connects salvation to that in the opening words of Romans chapter 1. He says, For in the gospel a righteousness is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. If you have an American passport, oh, that means something. It means that you can travel throughout the known world, go outside of America's borders, and still have America's protection for you. But being a citizen of heaven, that means all of us have the passport of God. We have the promise that God goes with us wherever we go. But also, we are, need to remember that we're never outside of God's kingdom of grace. But listen to what he says in our reading. He says, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. This precious promise that God is with us is not only for us, but it's also for our friends and family, our coworkers and neighbors right here in Brown County who aren't here today here in church, who maybe don't know who Jesus is, their Savior. Oh, maybe they've heard of him, but they don't know what he's done or what it means. 
As God declares, I will gather still others to them besides those all, who are already gathered. When those of us who know Jesus is our Savior, that we have peace, joy, and the guarantee of heaven, oh, that makes us want to remember God wants to gather other people, and he wants to use you and me to invite them. You see, God doesn't just love Americans. He loves all people. And remember, God doesn't play favorites in his kingdom, and neither do we here at St. Paul's. Our church is for new people, too. It's for singles and families. It's for people, whether you wave the American flag, the German flag, the Mexican flag, the African flag, whatever flag you fly, God says that he loves you and he wants you to be part of his kingdom. It's for people who've grown up wells and for people who have no idea what well stands for. St. Paul's is not a country club for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. Instead of just talking to our friends and neighbors and saying, hey, do you know these immigration questions? I pray that you give someone else an invitation this week to come with you next to hear that Jesus is their Savior too. Now, obviously, not everyone in the world wants to become an American citizen, but foreigners who become naturalized citizens tend to be the most patriotic, the most loyal to their country than those of us who've been here. How much more as Christians do we celebrate our Christian citizenship by demonstrating our patriotism, our loyalty, not just to this country, but to Christ? People come to America for a lot of different reasons. Some to escape war. Some to make a better life for their family. No one forces anyone to immigrate. They come here of their own free will. But look at your heavenly citizenship in a similar way. God didn't force any of us to become believers. Instead, God's word and his love captured our hearts and his gospel changes us. And just like those foreigners in our reading, changes us too. Listen how in these words. And foreigners who bind themselves together to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. All who keep my Sabbath without desecrating it and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and I will give them joy in my house of prayer. Just like recent immigrants become the most excited about their country, so too people who are newer members here to St. Paul's tend to be the most excited about their faith. I wish you could see what I and the other ministers here at St. Paul's get to see every single week. People, not only you who are happy to be here, and I'm looking at them, but I'm also, we get to see people who are new to our church, who didn't, didn't know Jesus as their Savior, who come to our Bible information classes with wide eyes as we read those passages that tell them about God's love for them. And now that they're joining our, many of them are joining our church, they want to be involved here and that they're so excited for being here. It also makes me wonder as a lifelong Lutheran, am I ever apathetic or kind of lukewarm about sharing the gospel with others? When I come to church in the morning, when I give a church offering, when I get involved here to St. Paul's ministry, do I ever complain? Do I ever go through the motions? But let me ask a more personal question. Do you? May Jesus and his blood forgive you and me from all of our sins and change us by his spirit to fire us up to show more genuine Christian patriotism. Yes, let's reach one more person this week for Christ. I've already confessed to you growing up, I don't know if I always appreciated my Christian citizenship as I should have. But now that God has let me travel to countries like Germany, I've been to Israel, Egypt, Norway, Mexico, I've seen how citizens in other countries live. And after watching them, I don't think any of us would ever want to give up the wonderful American freedoms that we enjoy every day. But someday, one day, maybe even two day, you and I are going to die. 
And on that day, God will take away our American citizenship. But take heart, because on that day, my Christian friends, God will give you and me full citizenship in heaven. And because of Jesus, that's worth longing for and living for today. Amen. For our stewardship thought today, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Ryan Steffel, who'd like to tell you about a special workshop coming here to St. Paul's. Good morning. I'm Ryan Steffel. I'm the chair of the Board of Outreach. At St. Paul's, our purpose is simple. We make and nurture disciples of Jesus. And outreach is a critical part of the make disciples of Jesus. In October, we have two opportunities to take part in a program by the Synod called Everyone Outreach. And the idea is to kind of refocus us on the making disciples of Jesus and get us to think about outreach in everything that we do. So there's a little video introducing it as well. Hi, I'm Pastor Eric Recker, the director for the Wells Commission on Evangelism. Your congregation will soon be participating in a program called Everyone Outreach, and I'm so glad you are. Every Christian congregation wants to see all of its ministries and all of its members thinking about and active in reaching the lost. To have a culture of outreach permeating the life and work of the congregation. But how does this happen? How do you create this kind of culture? That is precisely what Everyone Outreach is designed to help congregations do. The program kicks off with a two-day workshop, and I sure hope you'll participate. The more members who attend, the better. The workshop is designed to help you discover thought habits you may not even be aware you have that may keep reaching the lost from being part of your congregational culture. And it will teach you some practical ways to transform those thought habits so that you're more equipped to reach out to those who so desperately need to know their Savior. Oh, and you will have a blast doing it. The workshop is an interactive experience packed with learning activities and discussions that will make the time fly by. So I hope you will be able to attend and be part of this exciting new chapter in your congregation's life. As I said, we have two opportunities. The first is the weekend of October 7th and 8th. The second is the weekend of October 28th and 29th. Um, we have childcare available. Let's see, what am I missing? If you have any questions, you can contact me or Pastor Sharf. And there's a sign-up sheet both on the information desk and online. You can find it next to, uh, there's, Four pictures in circles, Pastor Smith's in one of them, Pastor Sharf's in another, right around there. So, thank you. <laughs> 